All right, YouTube, today we're going to play some more Death Shadow. We're going to play something that's based on Magnus Lantos' build, but is slightly different. And a couple cards have changed. From the main deck, I cut the Colgon's Committee in the main deck and just put another Stubborn Denial in. I'm a big fan of, you know, just having access to that card. Um, I cut one Lightning Bolt for another Fatal Push, because I just found myself getting outclassed. The, you know, creatures outclassing Lightning Bolt and just wanted a little bit more, you know, cards that could kill some beef in my deck. Um, oh, gosh. Going everywhere. Going nuts. Um, then I went over to the sideboard. Oh. Big old twitch alert there. J.U.E., thank you very much for the subscription. I appreciate that. Um, get back to what I was saying here. Um, you got the normal, like, counter spells here to, you know, bring in your, your grindy matchups. Uh, I think a new card that I've been trying and really liking, actually, is Leyline of the Void. It's a pretty volatile card that is pretty effective at uh, doing what it does. You know, it just kind of ends the game against Mardu, ends the game, kind of ends the game against Hollow One, because um, you can often deal with the first creature. Um, uh, ends the game against Mardu, basically, in this new Dredgevine deck. And it's also very good against KCI, which that deck is like, that deck's difficult to play against, even with a deck with this much interaction. Just getting that nice free win is nice from there. Um, then we got kind of like the grindy package here, which Tasker is like kind of a grindy card, but it's also just a fifth Delve Threat when you need a beater. Kira has been like decent. I don't know if I'm going to keep two of these or not, but it is nice that it shuts down spot removal. Um, then I've got the one engineered explosives to help hang out with Lingering Souls and Oriok Champions. Uh, one of Braid just to help with Hollow One and then Humans decks. I find that I like the shatter effects much more against humans now because the bugler has slowed their deck down and it's made them rely on um, ether vial more to go like bugler on three vial in what you get. If not, it's kind of slow after that. And then because I've kind of gotten rid of the lava mancers and got rid of that grind package, um, I'm adding a third battle rage to the deck in order to just be able to like really punch through those humans, those band spirit decks, elves, those decks where you just don't have like the last hopes and you don't have the um, lava mancers anymore. I, kinda, I just want to be able to beat over the top of those. So I was, I've been playing this deck for a while. Um, and I actually won 14 of 15 between this morning and last night. Or yesterday when I was uh, playing, struggled a little bit today, but ran it off and it was just pretty impressive. Like it, it did what it did well. Um, it, it had that efficient, um, some efficient hate cards. Leyline is much better than surgical. Yeah, the problem with surgical is that like they can still do stuff, you know. Um. They still operate, and the decks are so redundant and so very well, do such a good job at continuing to operate that um, they'll just put their thing back together if you don't kill them quickly. And sometimes, like, the surgical is just too slow. Like, if they go Faithless Looting into Ditch, Two Bridges, cast a Hangerback Walker, even if you have your surgical, they still get two zombies. They don't get two zombies because it's going to die. So maybe, you know, okay, so maybe that's not as as bad but you've got to but like they can rebuild easily through like faithless lootings the venge vine aspect of the deck but then also insulin neonate heater actual heater oh well again too keeping it keeping it fair your best matchups are any decks that are um spell based combo decks uh, something like Storm, Titan Shift, um, you know, those kind of decks. The worst matchups are the control decks. 
like blue white control and like Mardu. Those are what you're going to struggle with. Yeah, I'm just going to stub this, I think. Well, if this is some degenerate graveyard deck, I'm going to want to stub this. And the fact they didn't play this on two confuses me. Okay, so they had another land. Now if we hit a land, so now we get to play Dermag Angler. If we hit a fetch land or a street wraith. I think I did four for one. Yeah, that that was my 5-0 match there. Drawing the second angler was not ideal, but we still have a thought scour. Three four ones today. Oh my god. What do we got? Black, black. Collective Brutalities. We're playing against Hollow Ice. No, we're playing against Mardu. <laughs> Six guys plays games today. But the treasure chest price, they're so good. Um, this will start by attacking. I'm going to cycle this street right now because I have nothing to do with my mana. Still can't play Gurmag Angler, but if I go fetch, I can just Thought Scout you in a turn and play another Angler. Spendrine deck is absolutely everywhere. Kind of want to go. Yeah, so Surgical is just not where you want to be because the deck the deck is very good. You know, like the deck is very good at. I, like, I get three Battle Rages. I play, I'm playing three Battle Rages today. But the, get, the deck is very good at doing what it does. Um. Like, it will find, it's got, like, it's redundant through Cathartic Reunion, through Faithless Looting. No, I'll play Cathartic Reunion. But it's got Faithless Looting. It's got Insolent Neonates. Some play Street Wraith. And then, like, it's just very good at doing what it does. That I think just hitting them one time isn't going to do it. I think a lot of the Vengevine decks that we were playing against were for the Pro Tour on Moto. And I think it might be, it might be, like, not very good on Moto for a while, but I think if you play any, like, you know, Grand Prix, PTQs, or, like, Moto PTQs or anything like that, the deck's definitely going to be there. Six fifteen nine nine. that's pretty high for mine. Yes, that's very high. Yeah, I would assume... I would assume for this Mox payoff, I would want to pack at least, you know, three or four Ley Lines. It's already very good against KCI. What I don't know is if you're supposed to board them in the mirror. I know, Ben, you played them for a while. Did you did you bring them in in the mirror? I assume they get much worse in the mirror if I don't play Faithless Looting. So, like, if it's my plan to bring them in in the mirror, I probably likely have to put Looting back in my deck. Because I, I, like, I didn't bring them in today, Nameless, when uh, we played. Because, like, it's just such a dead draw, right? <clears throat> They're very good. Okay. I, I just remember, I remember playing against you one time, Ben, and you leylined me. It was either you or Canister leylined me, and I still won the game because you went down a card. We milled a shadow. And I just didn't know. I mean that maybe that's me being Yeah. I mean maybe that's me being um results oriented, you know. Am I gonna be able to angler again next turn? If I just like play my land, tap out, play Gurmag Angler, and then play my land, tap out, play Gurmag Angler again. Yeah, we're going to do that.
All right. That's annoying. We're just going to go right at this Liliana, even though, like, we put our opponent dead through a multiple things next turn. If my opponent plays a Lingering Souls, then it's just going to be so annoying. If we keep this Liliana around, it's how they claw back into the game. I probably would rather have the Bolt at this point. <clears throat> Appreciate the bits, Jay Huey. All right, this guy's just got a bunch of these to pay off here. Okay, that's not a bad hit. Okay, so we're bring so let's bring the let's see let's see how we sideboard here. All right, let me look here. I would agree, nameless think it's a good idea to do it. Let me pull up Magnus's sideboard here. My deck's not as close to Magnus's as it as it was, but it's the same sort of idea. Like I know I think I want this against Mardu. I want this against Mardu. I want these against Mardu, and I believe I want my Ley Lines. So he does bring it in here. Okay, so he brought in seven cards, but he did not have the, um, he did not, he had the Kologon's Commander's main deck. We boarded out a lot of discard spells, which I don't necessarily like. And he cuts some battle rages. So I think because they're like I, I feel like they are very likely to have ley lines. So I want to go something like I, I want to cut some of my top by bottom end removal. I want to keep my stubborn denials because we know they have Liliana's. And then like shave on some other card, but I'm not exactly sure how to board. Yeah, that's... I know I was hesitant about Ley Lines, but I think it's, like, pretty pretty dumb to not after this. So now I wonder if I want TBR in my deck, if my plan's Ley Line. Because, like, I can handle one side of Lingering Souls. So, like, if we just go like this... Yes, that's so that's... That's what we're gonna try to try to figure out how to remedy. So I kind of want to go like this because I have ley lines because I want all my other cards. Alternatively, I could go something like this. Yeah, playing versus Maru Pyromancer. I usually keep both my bat. I kept both my battle rages in before ley lines. So let me try this. Like this makes sense to me. <clears throat> mm -hmm, I, I would agree. Yeah, I, I'm sure the T, TBR is like. I think that like. I agree. Like I think I've said this before that TBR is the best way to win in this matchup and is the best way to lose. That like the risk reward, if we have leyline in the deck, might not be worth it. And the question is how I probably have to mulligan pretty aggressively to this leyline. Because of how my deck's configured. Like, if I keep this hand, then I am like a very, I'm very much a dog, right? Because I have four dead draws in my deck. So I think I have to mulligan. This hand's not that good, anyways. But I think I have to mulligan just because of the nature of the matchup. And with, with having Leyline in the deck, now we don't have a Leyline if this hand's reasonable. Yeah, it is very interesting to think about how the presence of Leyline in your deck, Leyline of the Void in the deck, it makes me want to board out Battle Rage because it makes me want to have more powerful cards in my deck to do things on their own because I don't have as many, um, because I have four, I have like four dead draws in my deck if things don't work out. 
you know? So it makes me want to try to raise the quality of cards in my deck overall. We obviously don't want to draw this. There's just like two cards that are pretty tough to beat, but we got to take this Blood Moon. Opponent's going to take our, probably our Gurmag Angler. Well, at least we can now take the Liliana. Now they're probably going to take my Thoughtseize and try to edict the Gurmag Angler. It is very interesting how a card, um, the presence a card in your deck influences the matchup so much. If he wants to take my Street Wraith, he can. Because like it is, it is in some ways a very large fundamental change. That was a deck makes me not want to be playing any grindy one point games. Really extra. So then, so then, should I be leaving in my both my Gurmag Anglers? Um, and just like if we don't see Leyline from him, move my Gurmag Anglers back in. Uh, on that logic, I probably should board in my third Battle Rage, right? And then maybe cut my cards like Kolagon's Command. Like, I wanted to um, scry my top card to, before I thought seized. So now I like need to find a discard spell, I guess. A snapcaster mage would be okay. If I find a snapcaster mage next turn, I can play Gurmag Angler, or I can like. Now nah, I guess going snapcaster to just eat the edict isn't really great. Like, I wonder if I want to board something like lots of Stubborn Denials, not a lot of removal, and all my threats, and not even, like, bring in the Kiras or bring in the Kolagon's Commands, none of that stuff, and then just be, like, keep all my Street Rates and be just lean to the ground. Which I'm very assuming is a hand that they probably cannot beat if I have a Ley Line in play. But then it's like, how does that affect my mulligan? It's very interesting how this changes everything. God, I'm good at this game. I'm so good at this game. Oh my god, and we get to play Angler. We get to... Oh man, we, at least we get to ditch that. We know what we're ditching to. This Kolagon's Command. That was a neat, that was that was not a bad top deck. My opponent goes LOL nice. Them's the beats. They don't even have anything to do with this Kolagon's command that's really useful. Next turn they can go bolt, make me discard. Flashback looting, so we are spinning the tires. Oh, I was so sad. Today was the last episode of the Card Horror Podcast. I was just like, no. All right, we're not doing it. I'm going to play the Bloodstained Mire in case they land a moon and we can go get a swamp. Like, we give them, we give away some information. Like, they know, I believe they know we have this watery grave. I didn't necessarily pay attention there, but. And who knows, we might just jam this Leyline of the Void next turn. Just because, like, you can't, you can't take it home with you. Still, I think I'm still going to go fetch the Swamp. Going to six is a little dangerous. It all depends on like how much removal they left in. 
I guess what I can do here is I can attack first, and if they go to chump, they're obviously not looking to race. Though they might be trying to go double chump Kologon's command. But I'm much more inclined to play my Leyline now that they're going chump. Oh, so they have a bolt. That sucks. All right. So they get, they're going to have Kologon's command left. So I guess we're just going to go shock. Well, I guess, so they have bolt. If I shock here, then I'm dead to any removal spell from them. So I guess I'm just not going to shock. Because I can't even do that much with their Kologon's command anyways. I get punished. They top deck like a, a Lingering Souls. But I don't think that's worth the two life. When they have like that much reach. And now, Dean, we're going to upkeep this bobble Because we have nothing to do with our mana. Okay. So I kind of want to do this now, actually. Because we can discard this ley line to the Kologon's command. But I'm, I can't really hit anything very good to play at the end step. It would just be like a Thought Scour, like a Snapcast Mage isn't that good. Stubborn Denial is not that good. So I just don't have very many, very many decent hits. They're drawing a land. Means I can flash back their looting. We're probably going to see them ditch their black... Yeah, so they ditch their land. They still have the K command. And they have a bomb. Okay. So they have bomb, Kologon's command is their only things left. Man, if we hit our own Kologon's command here, that would be sick. It wouldn't be that sick, actually. We would just go, like, discard, return, Gurmag Angler... No. Oh, right on time. I still have my island in my deck. Yeah, I still have my island in my deck, so I'm gonna leave both of these lands in my hand. Like if I if I find Street Wraith, I'm probably just gonna cast it now. Oh, they don't even draw a card off that. That's so great. I forgot that's how that works. Their Bedlam Reveler costs... Wow, their Bedlam Reveler costs six. Oh, man, we milled over a Kiro, which kind of sucks. So now their Bedlam Revelers are going to cost six for the rest of the game, which is, like, really nice. All right, you get my E. Need something to do. Doesn't take a lot for my opponent to just break this game open. Like if they hit it, if they draw a pyromancer at any time, I am in a lot of trouble. I feel like I almost have the inevitability though, because their graveyard shut off. Like, and they're already through they're through one lingering souls. So, if, as long as they don't top deck, like, the next three Lingering Souls, or this is a Lingering Souls here, or is this, what is this? Camball. That's not bad. That is bad. Oh, so they've got at least five points on us. Four points. So we're at a basic four. And if we cast a spell, we're at we're at two. So this is gonna get probably gonna get dicey quick. Alright, well.
Well, that's what we're looking for. I'm not going to bluff anything because if they go to kill the creature and then I, if they try to kill the creature and I um, respond, then they just, I deal two damage to myself and they call guns command me. So I'm, I'm effectively like idle on locked. Okay, we're dead. Yep. Okay, so now let's think about this. So we know their graveyard hates Nile spell bomb, so we can bring back in our delve cards. So let's think about this. If we want to just like make this as short game as possible, then am I interested in some of these? Okay, I have 59 cards. I probably want this engineered explosives. These dismembers almost don't even matter. If, if we're going to plan to, like, do we mull aggressively to a ley line? Like, what are we doing here? Because, like, I can see a world where we go something like this, cut these two, and then play these. I did not there, uh, Hack21. Was it published? I'm going to try this for science. Like I, I I can totally understand if this is if this is misboarding, but I'm I'm going to give this a try here. Is it on goldfish? It was one card off, yep. Um, so now it's like, do I mulligan? I probably mulligan this hand. This hand's just not very good anyways. All right, so we have a ley line. So we have a ley line and a discard spell. So I think this is the smart opponent mulligan too. Um, let's just put this on top. We're gonna we're gonna fetch anyway, so we might as well just like put the fear of god in our opponent, make them think we kept the card on top. Put this into play. So now we have to not lose to like Liliana the Veil and Blood Moon. I think I'm just going to take his thought seize. Because this stubborn denial deals with either this lingering souls or this dread boar at one point. And now this phase looting kind of sucks because they can't just discard their lingering souls for free anymore. I'm going to fetch an island. I think that we can just start covering our bases here of how do we lose this game. And playing that this turn is one of the ways that we lose this game. What's up, dude? I tuned in for a second. Now the Pro Tour, you had like 200 million viewers. Um, Jeff Hoogland hosted me. Yep. I was very appreciative of that. We're going to let this resolve. If this is a Faithless Looting. Yeah, because now they actually have the cost of Faithless Looting. Like, Faithless Looting is actually like a problem in his deck now. It's no longer you can just pitch stuff. And it's great. Now it kind of just shuts off his engine, which I'm pretty amped about. Um, Debora, thank you very much for the follow. You're in there. And again, Jay Huey, thank you for the sub and the 100 bits. You are fantastic. All right. So what he did, he ditched Colgon's command and another Faithless looting. Subtime, yeah, buddy. What's going on, Drew? What is going on, bud?
I think the ley lines are interesting. I feel like I want Faithless Looting in my deck if I want to play with ley lines. EE for one. So, I guess we just let this go. And we save to fight another day. And maybe I can tag these Lingering Souls here. Playing all right. Yeah, we're, we're in the first match still. We're going to play our Bloodstained Mire to be able to just not get Blood Moon next turn. Should have done that before combat. I was sure he was going to pop it, but it's a good play by him not popping it. I could have gotten him one more free point of damage. <clears throat> How's your day at work, Drew? Oh, that feels good. It does feel good to just deal with Lingering Souls. I think I'm still going to get the Swamp here and keep this in my hand. All right, so now we'll probably just snap. Do we have an Inquisition? We have a Thought Seize. I guess I just snap thought seize, get this dread boar out of their hand, or get another lingering souls. Long, they're going early tomorrow. We picked up another airport, so I'll be doing work in Denver. Nice, they find you out there. Yeah, so we're just gonna take this cam ball and let my opponent either dread boar this thing or thought seize it. Looks like we got a thought seize coming in here. Go look how I sideboarded. So we're just looking for anything, basically. Anything to get us going. It's probably gonna be good at some point. Yeah, but not for a bit. I need to get Boston out the door. I heard you played something. Played in I I play I heard you played someone important the other day. Um no, I played, uh, I got a host from Jeff Hoogland. I had like a thousand people watching my stream for a little bit a couple nights ago. That's right on time. So we might lose this game. We might lose this game. Which is just like, you know, for science here, we're going to figure this out. Yeah, you can have the stub. I, I did, Drew. I did roan out, bud. We're going to chat. Hope of the God is my little brother. The one, the only. To my stub. Okay. It's probably all right. I mean, he's winning this race. I'm definitely going to battle rage probably now, though. So if I draw another battle rage... Well, what am I doing here? I put him a six. He puts me a four. I don't have any lightning bolt or any reach in my deck. Yeah, I mean, we can't take it home, so we're just going to cast it. And he wants to waste. I don't know how we win here, but. So then maybe it's right to, like, sideboard in the lay. Because the ley lines were obviously very good. So maybe it's right to side in the ley lines, but not go, like, full linear here. Fun strategies running. They all love it, Drew. So he's gonna smoke this. So I don't think we actually have a draw. Because he mill he took our EE. So they got it. So that's interesting. So then maybe it's right. Like let's just pull this up here before we go to the next match. 
Um, oh, Moto's losing it. Before we go to the next match. So maybe against something like Mardu, it's right to side in like... Like... These... This... The Kira... And then maybe it's okay to board out. Probably want to cut my removal. Remove this over here. Probably want to cut like my removal. Um, cut these four. Let's say we just bring in this K command. And then I probably, maybe I just settle in for a long game. Because if I do land a ley line, like... It seems like if I had those longer, more powerful power game cards, maybe it would have been okay. So, like, maybe I just cut something like this. I think this is what I'm going to try next round, next time I play against them. I don't know if it's right to do or not, but I am going to try. The ley line definitely changes some things up where I just don't know... I don't know how I'm supposed to go at things. <clears throat> what are you doing for dinner tonight, Drew? Are you getting food truck pizza or are you cooking? Do 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 do. Yeah, I don't I don't really like ever cutting a lot of discard spells and playing Death Shadow. I think they're the best I think they're one of the best cards in the deck. Chomping on some prime sharp Italian hoagie right now. Watching Better Call Saul. I hear that's actually a pretty good movie. A pretty good show. Better Call Saul. Yeah, I think you're you're sideboarding. I'm going to keep his hand. Your sideboarding, uh, I think it's probably dated. In my opinion. So I could just do the cool old Thoughts Guard Empire. Are we going to play against humans? No, we're going to play against Boggles. All right. So what do they keep on top? No, they put a card on the bottom. They didn't put a card on the top. It is actually my coworker told me to watch it. I've been, like, meaning to... I don't know. I've been looking for TV. Megan and I are currently watching that 70s show. I love that show. And uh, so we, we are going to have to find something after that. So this is probably just another land. So I guess I just take this Spider Umbra and hope to Snapcast or Ambush Viper this thing. I think that's the plan. What is then now it's gotta be like an ethereal armor. So we're just gonna pass with both stubborn denial thought scour and just snapcast to mage eat this thing. Oh no, I agree. I think I'm going to fetch a basic. Because, like, I don't have too, too much life total to play with. If they, if they, you know, put another guy, if they put another thing on this guy. So, can't counter this. And they're going to play the boggle after combat. This almost doesn't even accomplish me very much. So now I just don't even really want to do it. I think I'm choosing to do this line, so we're gonna we're gonna do it again. But it actually does not accomplish hardly anything because they drew the land. Their plan is boggle all the time. I didn't want them to land like a spirit, like a spirit link, or not spirit link, a spirit mantle or a daybreak cornet. But they just don't care about that. Now I gotta find Death Shadow quickly. <clears throat> Uh, 
Hi, um, let's serum visions. Okay, neither of these are threats. So we're just going to pass. I probably, there's a decent, very decent chance that I am dead next turn. Well, I guess I get a couple draw steps at a creature. That slippery bogle is a problem, though. All right, that's uncastable. Yeah, I just think your discard spells are your best cards in most matchups. Like, I think that your discard spells poke holes in the other fair deck strategies to enable you to get your creatures through. Um, it's ideally not about playing long games. I could have stubbed that, but I guess I should have stubbed that. It would have given me another turn. Okay, so we found the Gurmag Angler, which is good. So we know they have Slippery Boggle and then one other card. All right. I'll get rid of this and the Snapcaster. I could have ditched the Thoughtseize. That would have been a better play from the home team. What kind of sucks is that I've got to trade with this thing. So you got Slippery Bogle and one other card. The old Slippery Boy. I don't think my opponent should attack. Yeah. Well, I guess they get their Rancors back, so it wouldn't be that bad. Okay, well, there's step one. So I guess I'm just fetching a tap land. And then hopefully we draw right into a Death Shadow. All right, we drew into a Gurmag Angler, and then there's a Death Shadow right there. Holy shnikes. That was not a bad Serum Visions. Okay, Spider Umbra. Reach, Trample. Oh, so they're just looking to trade. They're basically trading this Spider Umbra for a Gurmag Angler. And then they have, they play another Bogle. Then they've got two lethal threats next turn. Okay. So we know we're drawing Death Shadow. I'm going to do this now. Because we get Stubborn Denial. It's pretty good. All right. Lightning Bolt doesn't do anything. So we're just going to bluff the Stubborn Denial. And we're going to pass. All right, that's good. Just not a Spirit Mantle. All right, I think we're good now. Spirit Mantle, Path to Exile kills me. I don't know how many paths this deck plays to start with, but we're just going to Battle Rage, and we're going to Battle Rage right now and then just go for it. I guess it doesn't it doesn't really matter, but we're just going to attack with everything. We're not playing around anything because they would have passed last turn and won if they had it. Get out of my face. Get rage. It's so therapeutic battle raging people. Like sometimes I have a hard day at work and I just want to come home and battle rage somebody. It just feels so nice to just like just get in there. So I want engineered explosives and stubborn denial and battle rage. I'm going to cut two fatal pushes and one dismember. And then just keep everything else the same. Man, it just feels good to, to just battle rage somebody. I'm going to have to restart Moto here in a second. It looks like it's kind of tweaking out a little bit. This is Magical Lines quality product. 
So I have Engineer Explosives, which is like my best card in the matchup, and I have a Stubborn Denial to help me early in a redraw. This Dismember is kind of useless, but it could hit a Core Spirit Dancer. And my opponent's Mulligan. I think this card is this good in the matchup, and we get a redraw. And like, I've definitely seen them Mulligan, and this hand also doesn't get blanked by a Ley Line, which is nice. I've seen sometimes when I play against Boggles, they Mulligan to a Ley Line. So there's always a kind of a cool little sub game about uh, when to, or like how to keep and how to mulligan. So now we're going to Thought Seize them. I'm going to hold this probably, this is probably going to be my turn three play. Let me put a card on the bottom. Double Umbra is not good. So if they've got double Umbra, I think I'm just going to grab this path. There's arguments of grabbing an Umbra because if you blow up one, if they only have one Umbra on and they like put a Daybreak Coronet on, then you knock the Coronet off. This doesn't leave us a lot of time, but... It does think that their draw lined up is like our best sideboard card is like kind of it's kind of blank, but it does get rid of both of them, so it's not awful. All right, that's pretty good. So now I'm just going to play, I think I'm going to fetch Black Red, play Gurmag Angler, have Stubborn Denial up. Oh, I will not have Stubborn Denial up. So this could get, this could get bad. But if it gets bad, it gets bad. All right, that's, here we go. Alright, so I'm definitely attacking. Because we're effectively going to be trading 1 damage for 5 damage. And with Battle Rage plus Engineered Explosives, that is something that we want to be doing. I guess if they get a Dryad Arbor, it pumps their clock up. That's probably the play. Yep. So they're going to crack me for three. And then I can crack them, have Dismember up, and Stubborn Denial. Give our opponent a chance to resolve something here. Land tap is good for the home team. God, that's not bad. I've always found this matchup to be pretty good. Like, people that I consider intelligent don't really like this. But, like, I've just found that, like, your creatures, like, they have so many, they have so few cards that matter. And your creatures are just so big that... Million dollar question, right? So what do I lose to? If I stub this, I lose to Spirit Mantle. I can block, so I only I think I only lose to Spirit Mantle if I stub this. Not even another path to exile. So That one too. Yep, that one too. Oh, that's frustrating. That's my fault. Oh, no, I don't lose to that one because I can just block the Dryad Arbor. Derp. Derp. I have a funny story. Like, one of my biggest mistakes that I ever made in a Magic tournament 
because I made a huge mistake against um made a huge mistake while playing against uh, whatever it is um Boggles and I scooped to him because I thought I was dead because I was so frustrated with what I had done and it just turned out that like I wasn't dead and that I had just made a mistake and I just just scooped to him the guy's like uh you're not dead. And I was actually like, and then I had plays, like I could have, I damn nationed away his creatures. He went to go fetch Dryad Arbor, and then he would have been able to load up his Dryad Arbor with Rancors, and I could have just, like, uh, Fulminator Mage his Dryad Arbor. Probably need to start getting some lights in here. It's, it's getting dark and gloomy in DC. Heater. Yeah. Good, not great. Do a little bobble action. What do you got? Fatal push, spell. We're going to keep it. We're going to hope it has text. I picked up a, another Onslaught Pluto Delta last night, which was awesome. Ooh, we're playing a mirror. We're playing a mirror. We're playing Mardu. We're playing a mirror. My hand is not good. But if mulliganing the mirror is pretty awful. He probably takes my Snapcaster Mage, if I had to assume. Yeah. All right, we're going to fetch. Because even if we draw a bobble... Oh, we have six. All right, we're going to fetch in our upkeep. Because even if we draw a bobble, we can use this Bloodstained Mire with it. So I would just like to... Even though it's marginal, I would like to thin my, land, my deck out just a tad. Didn't matter. We're so dead. They're going up to seven cards. We haven't even, like, cantripped or discard spelled them. Hey, Jeff. Thank you very much for the host. I appreciate it. I hope your stream went well. If you guys are coming over from Jeff's stream, my name's Dylan Hubby. I'm a part of the Cardholder Network. I stream mostly modern, some legacy, and some standard. Uh, if you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. Um... I hope you had a good stream, Jeff, and I really appreciate your host. Oh, my phone's getting nasty. So I think our only prayer here is to is to get in, is to get rid of, is like get a Death Shadow and then just hope that our opponent doesn't have a way to kill it. I probably want to fetch... I've got two, three lands. I have plenty of lands. We don't need to fetch yet. Let's get hit a bobble. Okay. Um, I guess it's marginal, but I think I do want to fetch. I think I'm so far behind here that I need every single like piece of advantage in order to get back into this game. And that includes... like. Fetching too thin. It's like we're just we're just in such a tough spot. Yeah, well, that wasn't bad. Play this. Play our shadow. Then pass. Show me what you got. That was a very that was a very good sequence of turns for us. I appreciate everybody for the follows. Um, if I miss you, I'm sorry. I I keep my volume down because it messes with my YouTube channel. I'm not super good at figuring that out yet. But I guess we got one from Stanley Pew, Bright Mist, uh, Semel Past. Appreciate all you guys for your hosts. Or your follows, excuse me. Alright, so like 
Get some good draws here. That's not bad. So if we crack in his shadow, this is this is so obnoxious. Well, actually, we can just shock and he has to chump. Yeah, so that's the plan. And then, like, a lot of these decks play Bolt, so we're going to hope we don't get Bolted here. It's Polo, come on, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm just going to pay full retail for this Gurmag Angler. Like, it's our last card. We're not hiding anything. We might as well keep our graveyard intact. And then just, like, hope they don't have a Lightning Bolt. They probably have between two and three lightning bolts in their list, so yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, Jeff gave us another host, which is great. So this is the sword we died on, uh, you know, like the the hill we died on right here. We we knew that when we did this. Um, so I want my ley lines. I don't really know if I want Kira or not. I would like this Kologon's Command. Cards I don't want. I don't want Bolt. I don't want... I don't want Battle Rage. I don't want Bolt. I think I can cut... Like... I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm trying something out new with my sideboard here. Adding these Ley Lines definitely like changes the makeup a little bit of what we're doing. So I don't really, like, I'm changing, I'm throwing off how I sideboard here usually. The Kira has been, like, stone average, to tell you the truth. Like, I haven't been like, yeah, we got a Kira, and I also haven't been, like, very disappointed to draw it. It, um, I played it against Blue-White earlier today, and my opponent wrathed me, but they had to wrath me or they died, and they only had, like, two cards in their hand. So, like, it forced it, it forced that interaction. Like we blanked a path. Um, I got a two for one out of it one time from that same blue white deck. I ended up beating that that person because they just ran out of gas in one game. I think that was because of the Kira. It is low impact and that it just does not attack very well. It doesn't interact in combat. So we're gonna keep this and we're gonna start with a ley line in play. And then we'll board accordingly if our opponent has ley lines, which they don't. Or they don't have a ley line in their opening hand. Doesn't seem great. The main deck control decks run four to six wraths. But the nice part about these control decks is they're playing like Terminus. They're moving away from Supreme Verdict. So now they're taking um, a lot less stress off of our counter spells. So the Snapcaster Mage does nothing. They kept in Battle Rage, which is interesting. I kind of just want to take their Thoughtseize and then look to Thoughtseize again. Um, Autoplay, thank you very much for the subscription. I appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. So we're likely just going to take the Stubborn Denial and then Serum Visions, and we're just going to try to hit our land drops here. Our deck is much more turned on. Yeah, like this Colagon's Command doesn't really do anything. It can kill our Snapcaster Mage. Like, their Snapcaster Mage doesn't really do anything, so they have these five cards. Kira doesn't really help all that much. And she's pricey, something like Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, I'm saying you you would play it with that there, Circle Turk. I don't think that we want either of these cards. Summer Denial is only really good when we have a threat, and we just don't have that, so... I'm going to definitely Thought Seize the Kologon's Command next turn. And then if my opponent wants to trade Snapcasters in combat, that's cool. I'm very, I'm down with that. Because we have our own Kologon's Command. <clears throat> I could be like, Thoughts, I could be just Serum Visioning for some gas. But I think I would rather make, um, get rid of this K Command. They could have a Death Shadow. Yeah, they just scoop it up there. Compared three times against Bubbles in this deck today. It feels bad, man. I don't even think Bubbles is that bad there, Sad Mufasa. Like, I mean, are you playing Engineered Explosives? Like, they only have a, they only have a very low amount of cards that actually matter. Yeah. 
And I think we're going to keep it. We didn't see ley lines from them. We, we saw their hand plenty of times, but they only saw probably a quarter of their deck. So it's, it's feasible. But I think we're going to go with it here. Oh, well, I, I, well, I was playing 2x. Like, I, when I had two engineered explosives and I had four stubborn denials in my deck, I thought I was, I thought I was in good shape in that matchup. Yeah, um, I don't know, Circle Turk. Uh, I really, I don't think it's great. Um, I think that Humans has changed as a deck, though. And I think that you can attack it other ways. Um, so this hand is, like, very medium. It's kind of all air, and we don't have a ley line. Though my opponent has mulligan, so even if I draw a ley line, we're still up a card. This hand is just very medium. It's going to play a very slow game. I think I'm going to keep this. Like, I'm not super excited about it. But I think I am going to keep this. Well, so I think what's changed in that matchup is I really was not super happy with cards like Kolagon's Command in that matchup. I think Kolagon's Command is now very good in that matchup because they're so much more reliant on whatever it is. They're so much more reliant on... I can't even say it. It's on the tip of my tongue. They're so much more reliant on Aether Vial. They're, they're much more reliant on Aether Vial. They just need that card. So... That's a really good draw. Um, so I'm going to fetch next turn, but I can couple that fetch with my Street Wraith. So I think I'm just going to Serum Visions. My opponent discard spells me. They're going to take like my Gurmag Angler. Uh, I think they're much more reliant on Aether Vial. So if they don't have Aether Vial... Like, if you just shatter their Aether Vial, their Militia Buglers become very clunky, and we just want both of these. Uh, I should have put the Shadow on top. I'm going to miss your answer, but how well does that Shadow do against Mill and Modern? You're very, you're very good against Mill. You're very good against any sort of deck that is trying to, like, put cards together to kill you. You're very good against, like, Storm, Titan Ship, Burn, Mill. Um, any deck that is trying to win on Synergy, you're very good for you're very good against. So I think I'm just going to jam my angler here. I would like to have both of my shadows living because oftentimes the last shadow standing is the one that wins you the game or the bigger shadow. So if they do deal, like I don't want to play these out while they're puny. I'm still not sold on Magnus's on you and Magnus's feeling that looting is worse than visions. I think Vision's um, pretty rational. I feel like he has some good. So I'm feeling that looting is worse. I think Vision's is much better than looting. Um, I think that looting is a fine card. I think it is like good for the deck. It you know you can play that way. I'm thinking about playing lootings in this deck because I play um, ley lines. What card do I? No, this is stupid. Let me let me use my brain here. I definitely want to leave this dismember in the board in here because it is just so nuts with shadow. Yeah, so they dismember. This lets them double shadow if they have it here. I think the bridge vine matchup is pretty poor if you don't have a line. I just did it again. So I was playing um, three bobbles. In the version I was playing before, and I'm just trying this one out now, I was playing three bobbles, two looting, and two thought scours, and just Gurmagged on two fine. Okay, so they're going to thought seize me. They likely will take a shadow. I'd be very surprised if they didn't take a death shadow. Because they only have one card, and like they're not on the board at all. <clears throat> I need to, after this match,
After this match, I need to just run down to the mail quickly. They took my Snapcaster. That seems very odd. Like, I guess Snap Dismember is, like, backbreaking. But it's like, what do you got, dude? Do you just have, like, an engineer? Are you just sandbagging this engineer? Like, the greatest engineer explosives of all time? <sighs> God, if I get ee I'm just going to puke. Okay. We're going to get... Okay, um... Chat, I need to run down for my wife and grab something from the mail. I will be back here in about five minutes. Please stay with me. I appreciate y'all for being here. I need to fix my deck here. I could just go like this and let y'all see my cute puppy. I'll be right back.
Uh, all right. Thank you guys for everybody for staying. Did and jump back into it here. I guess while we're here, well. So my name is Dylan Hubby. Thank you guys for showing up today. I'm part of Carl Herder Network. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. Um, if you need any Magic Online needs, check out Card Hoarder. They're the best bot chain in the business. They do a lot for the community, and they sponsor a pro team. Their podcast just ended today, which was sad. Um, if you want to see any of the archives from my stream, you should check out my YouTube channel, which is linked below. And if you want to talk to me about Magic, you should check me out on Twitter. I love I love uh, talking about that. And uh, if you have any single needs, check out Gamer Craze. That's where I learned to play Magic. The Crystal Commerce is linked below. Yeah, that was apt to happen. But what are you going to do? Yeah, my wife my wife uh, had something from work sent here. So I had to run and grab it. The ley lines do feel kind of cool. Like, they, it's very nice how you can just, like, get a card that in a lot of matchups... You, uh, you just broke my freaking mind. I thought it was... Hovey. No, it's Hovey. Yeah. Everybody says Hovey, but it's just, it's Hovey. It's like a, it's like a, it's almost like an H-A-U-V-E-Y. Okay, so how I think, this is how I think Modern stacks up. I actually no longer think that Modern is a format where you can play whatever you want and win. If you're, if you're from purely the spike side, like, there are a, like, there's a top, whatever, four or five decks in the format, Okay. There's like Tron, Humans, Blue White Control, even though I load that deck, but it's it's good. Um, Tron, Humans, Blue White Control, Bridge Vine, and KCI. I think that is like the top of the format. I think Grixis Shadow is power level near the top of that format. The problem that Grixis Shadow has is that it's inherently a fair deck, so sometimes it can be difficult to answer diverse threats, you supplement that by being able to turn four people. I think the next set of decks underneath that is like your decks that are just inherently aggressive or they're aggressive and disruptive or they do something linear that's very good. And I think if you're doing something linear and modern, you're doing okay. So I have something like Storm, Affinity. Um, I like the Blue Red Wizards deck. I think that deck's aggressive. I think it's the best kind of control deck there is. It, I, I, I am in a couple of Facebook groups. They're P2DA Cell. P2D. P2 to Cell. Sorry. Wow, I love thought seizing people after they mulligan. Like, that is just great. Yeah, I think that modern is actually starting to, like, break away. Um, I already have a fatal push, so I don't think I want a second one. What you playing against Joel? Do you ever try to jam to your angler? Well, it, it kind of depends. I like to... It depends on how my hand is. I do like to play that as aggressively as possible. Essentially. Because, like, they... Like, they have stronger cards than we do. I, I don't know their Polybus. Like, I really don't know why that deck is good. It just continues to win. You know? Like, I can't, like, I, I would be a fool to not say that it's good because the deck just continues to win. I don't understand why it's good. I loathe it, you know, but it just keeps winning. <clears throat> I pass here. I appreciate all the follows that are coming in here. It's hard to keep up with all of them. So do I want to fish for something to do with my other mana? And I think I do. I like holding my street rates for the most part. So we found something to do with our other mana, which is nice. All right, so we are not going to have... It's really bad that we drew a basic land now because they're just going to feel to ruin us out of this game.
Snapcaster Mage is awesome, yes. Yeah, this does not pan out. <clears throat> Yeah, like, so if you're if you're playing, if you play Death Shadow, some of my biggest tips to playing against Blue White Control is like the cards. The cards that really matter are Supreme Verdict and Search for Escanta, and those are the cards that will get you the most. They want to field me. They can field me here. Like those are the cards that are really bad. All right, that's a pretty good draw. So coupled with, uh, we have to play our island because we're not going to have Stubborn Denial if they field us. So coupled with Stubborn Denial plus Battle Rage, and if my opponent continues to draw off nothing, we do have a, a decent shot at this. We need to delve one more. Um, it's probably just Thoughts. No, it's actually Serum Visions. Thoughts Scour is better here because I can do it at the end of their turn. Do you feel greedy? So you feel greedy? Is not top No, I don't feel. I feel like it's not in those top devil, uh, top level decks because it is incredibly difficult to play. It is. Um, okay, yeah, you get my. So they're just gonna take me off red, which is kind of annoying. I have one more red source though, which is good. It's difficult to play. It is. Um, it is a deck that like. While it can put its head down and be linear, it also tries to sometimes interact with your opponent and play a slower game. So, what are we doing here? Are we fielding? So, it, it it's not necessarily as linear in it, or as... I don't know exactly how to say this. It is very difficult to play, which takes away from a lot of it, in my opinion. I played Udemy Control for the past couple of weeks because I also didn't understand. I think the reason that the deck is good is because it utilizes all this card very well. They control decks like Jess Guy. They try to end the game. That makes sense. Yeah, that's all right, so that doesn't do anything. This card probably does not have text. So we're not going to have any black sources after next turn. Which, having Dismember is nice, but we're still in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, I would, I would agree with what um, Circle Turk is playing. Oh, please, you never control. I, I definitely feel that it is not a very good Snapcaster Mage deck, but it still, you know, utilizes its other cards very well. I wish I could cast that. If I can cast that guy, that guy would be sweet. Opponent would be dead on board. What are you doing? I'm going to stop anything. Like, if they path, even if they can go like Jace or Teferi, I'm just, like, not that worried about it now. Because, like, I, I'm realistically not beating a lot from my opponent, so we might as well just beat what we can. And what we can beat is that freaking Bless Alliance. Yeah, Snap's not necessarily a great card in blue-white control. It is a it is a very good card. Whoa, they're spreading season their own land. I guess that makes sense. They need to draw cards. So they don't have anything here. This is kind of a sign of weakness. Like I'm just going for it. If we draw a land, though, oh, they have the. We're gonna search. Just kidding. All right, fetch land. It could be a fetch land. Yeah, now we're dead. This search is going to flip, and then the search is just going to bury us. I don't think, I don't necessarily think that building Grix of Shadow is about being able to beat the metagame. I think building Grix of Shadow is about, like, making it so your deck is, like, very linear and, like, aggressive. Yeah, we're just, like... I guess we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going until my opponent like, actually does something to kill us. The problem is, is that Lex Lock, you're, you're reusing cards that are 4 mana, 5 mana. Or they're, they're 4 mana. They're like, they're, they're Cryptic Command and Seer Visions. Those aren't that good at, like, my deck is a better Snapcaster Mage deck than his deck is. Like, the fact that my Snapcaster Mages do things on turn 3 
His Snapcaster Mages do some things on turn three. They have a crit. Yeah, we're just going to scoop it up here. They have a cryptic. We're good. That's because I can't afford to play Tarn. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's tough. Like, my opponent, like, I am a better Snapcaster Mage deck than my opponent. Um, my opponent has just more powerful card for card spells. I interact better on on a mana access. So I want another Delve guy. This is what how Magnus boarded, so we're gonna go with this. We want these strokes. We don't want Battle Rage, Bolt, or Fatal Push. I'm gonna leave in a dismember because I don't want to just get hosed by a random Bane Slayer Angel. Oh, sort by converted mana cost. Yes, yeah, I would agree. Your, your spells are cheap. Your spells are cheap. You have different kinds of spells. You can, like, flashback. Like, this deck here, this Snapcaster Mage turns into counter magic, removal, and discard. Like, this is an amazing Snapcaster deck. See, this sucks, because, like, I can't mulligan this hand, but, like, it just doesn't do a whole hell of a lot. I'm going to keep it. We're going to start off with an Inquisition because I would like to manipulate my Serum Visions with my Street Wraith next turn. Okay. So we're going to take this Relic because we can beat this path as soon as we give him a target to path something. That Relic is just going to turn off half of our cards. Another nice part about Blue-White is Blue-White can play Relic, you know, because they're not that big of a snap. Jeez. Those are two pretty unfortunate draws. Put on the bottom, put on the bottom. I probably should have left that Street Wraith on top. It all comes coming down, chat. Yeah, like a Snapcaster Mage that kills somebody is way better than a Snapcaster Mage that doesn't. Control Z. Yeah, I definitely should have left my Serum Visions on top. Yeah, it's just the random card is better than the... Uh, I guess we are not casting any right spells now. The random card off of Thought Scout is just better than the 1-1 one -one body. Yeah, I just don't think we want any of these. I guess we can put this on top. Thought scour them, get rid of their path to exile, which is like, I guess, something. That's a trick you can do with Thought Scour. Oh my god. Target creature. We're going to take this one. <clears throat> There's going to be more bodies. But, but a 1-1 one, one body is pretty irrelevant, right? We're going to get fielded. I kind of don't want to play my... Re my I don't really want to play this land. I guess I might want to like cast something and then stub something also. Like if I hit a Kologon's command, it would be perfect. Yeah, I don't even I don't think it's great in Grix's Shadow either. It's just like the one one body is just not like this deck's not about one one bodies. Okay, so we drew a shadow. The problem is, is that they're just going to kill it and then play this Jace. I, jeez, man. I mean, it didn't help. We just drew two duds. Also, like these these dismembers, like you you have to keep them honest with respect to Celestial Colonnade, but it is definitely annoying. Um, when you draw them. 
Yeah, like we're just gonna. This is gonna either gonna make them Jace bounce this or Detention Sphere. Which is like just unfortunately where we're at right now. Can push you from this place. Yep. That's the tough part about playing a control deck. So we know their hand, which is nice. God, like the worst card ever in the face of a Jace. I guess we're, we're going to play it. We're going to hope our opponent respects this. Like, hopefully they just play into stub and, like, they don't do it. We were telegraphing stub. Any colonnades. Okay, that's better than getting jaced. God, he had a path too. So now we're now our whole we got Jace covered thing is is not right. God, yeah, we're just yeah, we're just gonna go to the next game. That's a beating. Oh yeah, I should have just dismembered. Yep, you're right. You're right. No, I just zoned out. Nope, you were right for sure. That was a mistake on my part. I was a little frustrated, which happens. I appreciate sure everyone showing up and hanging out tonight. We have 221 viewers. You all are great. Do any of you guys... Do any of you guys... Uh, you definitely should not play with 4 snap against Mage. We are the backseat Magic players. Yeah, you guys are. So do any of you guys that are watching, are you guys normal people? Do you guys watch here often? Or, um, you know, is this your first time, first time coming to the stream? I do this kind of as a part-time fun thing. I find that like creating content helps me organize my own thoughts so that I, I, I become better with respect to that. Much perfectly. That's a lot of personal information. I'm just a personal guy. Uh, so if I hit a blue land, this hand's very good. And I'm going to keep it. I'm here. I'm looking forward to watching you down the line as well. Great. There's Stanley. Stanley Polo. Yes. I hope you're doing well there, Six Sigma. I usually stream about twice a week. Pretty consistently. Stream. Like, I'm pretty rock solid with that. My wife's out of town now, so... Looking for good Grix Shadow content? Yep. My wife's out of town, so now I'm just kind of hanging out. All right, we could die. We're going to die. I would assume this matchup gets harder as well without, like, the control plan. Yeah, just, like, show me a way to win. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Twitch notification bought me here and got me subscribed. Way to go, Twitch. Way to go, Twitch. Yeah, like, I mean, obviously there are cards that could ban. Like, they could ban Faithless Looting, and they could ban, um... They could ban Looting, and they could ban whatever it is. Pretty, and pretty reasonably and do that. I can't think of the name of the card. Ugh. They could ban Looting and Ancient Stirrings. Pretty much at any time. Um, so what do I want here? I kind of want... I liked having two Stubborn Denials because they have Cord and Company, but Company gets much worse after Sideboard. Yeah, Ancient Stirrings. Yeah. I could easily see that card go. And good riddance. K-Command's probably not great. Like, what K-Command does is it kills a creature, which, like, we're probably in the market for. But it might just be too slow.
I'm going to go like this. I would much rather see things get unbanned because, like, because ultimately, when you ban something, you take things away from Magic players and you limit the way that they can play Magic. And there's nothing inherently off, like, you know, like, and that sucks. So I much rather would see something not as drastic done. Um, so I'm going to keep this hand. We could be in a little bit of trouble, but we're going to bobble ourselves, look for a land. If there's not a land on top here, we're going to shuffle it, but it's not. We found a land. So now we're going to get to play. Oh, geez, I'm crow. I hit my desk. Watch out. Give me days, but only works with basic island. <laughs> I think Splinter Twin is like, I think Splinter Twin is probably fine. All right, so we actually get to play Shadow and Angler this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we do have to cycle our Street Wraith in order to have our Shadow make it. So this is what I was talking about here where like, Death Shadow has draws that are just like, you know, on a different stratosphere than most decks in modern, and like this is one of them. I should have fetched a I should have fetched a watery grave there. That was a mistake. Cause now it can be handcuffed here. Alright, well we got lucky. So we still one hundred percent could die here. Because we just don't have quite have the like interaction. Okay, so we have a battle rage. We don't want either of these cards. So we kind of just have to like cross our fingers here. <clears throat> like we're gonna turn four them. Unless they turn three us. Temple decks don't exist anymore. I actually don't think days would be good in modern. We need a deck that was trying something broken. I play it. You know. If we're. What do you got? You're in a company? Militia Bugler. Okay. Does Militia Bugler find Vizier Remedies? No, it finds Oriok Champion now. Okay. So we're going to attack because the Bugler has to get in combat here or they're going to die. Actually, if the death, if they block this with this, we get him. Even, even if they block... get you I guess the I always forget this but the they did they had to not block with the militia bugler because how protection works with battle rage they soak up the damage twice I just want to play Delver and Modern oh, they just give me ponder or days because if you can play Delver and Mod like Circle Turk, if they if if Days was legal in modern, it would go in this deck, and then you wouldn't play Delver. I like what Wizards did with Retort and Lightning. Yeah, that's very cool. It is very cool what they did there. We're just gonna submit again. We're gonna have to be a little more selective with our hands on the draw, because it's gonna be a little more difficult for us to be explosive. Everyone that's following, I appreciate all of it. Um, you know, P2. I'm so bad at P2 to sell, um, XX Corpse, XX, Fire 9, FMC, uh, Duracell, X Duracell. I appreciate that. All right, we're going to keep this hand. We've got uh, Thoughtseize and a Lightning Bolt and a little bit of manipulation. The problem, yeah, so it, it, would, it would be difficult. So let's check out our top card. We're looking for something like a Thought Scour here. 
We're not looking for that. So we're going to get Blood Crypt and bolt this thing now. We have to restart Moto after this league. Ooh, bird, 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 bird is the word. All right, so we get to cast Shadow this turn, which is sweet. We could cast Angler. So how much the Shadow is going to be? I'm going to deal three. I'm going to deal seven damage to myself over two turns, so it doesn't really matter which one I cast. I would like to be able to snap Bolt. So let's see what our opponent's doing. Oh my gosh, Moto is laggy. All right, so let's take this collected company. This rounding up excavator is gonna is gonna do a number on me. We thankfully can deal with that next turn, but there are definitely worlds where it's not gonna be good. I think that as kind of a tip, like if there's any company players or like court of calling players, I certainly think that these cards should be of the first cards you cut in matchups like these, because you just don't reliably have any creatures. So I'm just going to attack in, and then I think I really want to hit this Birds of Paradise. Like, but so greedy, though. Like, I just want to, like, cut off their mana. Because I think that if my opponent just spends time dirtling and um, wasting, like, they go, we, we, we don't get, they could cut off my red sources, though. Yeah, I'm just going to be an adult. Take out this ramen up excavator. Just give me more wizards. I'm going to put UR tempo. I can't just bolt the core target, but I think I would rather just like not get my lands messed with. One, two, three, four. So they, they have a company? Or we're gonna cord for one. We're just gonna play a blister for two. You got it. Bang. So the last card's cord. So you kinda of have to like figure out how much damage I want to take here. So we're gonna do this no matter what we do. Okay, so this cord is dangerous. This vizier is not really dangerous. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cord. I don't think I'm shocking myself. I think we're just going to hover right at six. Because now they're going to have to... I guess there's merit to putting him to taking two more damage and putting him to enough so that they have to block the Gurmag Angler next turn as well. So that might have been a better play. Yeah, I think I should have shocked myself. Because now the angler would have been lethal, so they had a double block or double chump. We're going to play this so we can just cast another angler next turn. Your wizards needs either a better counter spell or a better cantrip, or it would be plenty powerful enough. The deck has eight bolts. I would agree with that. It seems like a very good deck. So it's aggressive, it's disruptive. Okay, so now they do have to chump because they had to tap the white mana. So let's start with this. So we find a battle rage. Just good night, Irene. All right, we're gonna do this one more time. There's a chance we're, yeah, we're gonna do it like this because we might find a black spell we cast. All right. Well, we found battle rage in the graveyard, though. I don't really see how my opponent gets out of this. Okay, that's a way to get out of it. Um, let's get an island. And then our graveyard is stocked enough where I'm just going to uh, cast. I'm just going to pump fake this stub. My opponent can no longer activate the hangerback walker, which is pretty good for the home team. <clears throat> this 
Sing of Thunder, not much combos. They banned Pure Dam because of Storm. But there's a lot of the ban. They banned like Rite of Flame, also Cloud Clouds there. Three, they have the Red Rag is much more Wizards doing CMC. Yeah, Wizards are cool. Tribal decks are cool. Oh, there we go. So we hit the three, two. So let's open up our treasure chest. We always open up the pity one. And then I am going to quickly turn my oven on. I'm going to start a pizza. And then going to come back. I'm going to get in one more league. I'll open up one of these. What do we get? No Nexus of Fate. All right. I'll be right back, everybody. I'm just going to go turn on the oven. Hey, how's it going, Seven Proud? 